Hi and welcome to part three of this PowerShell SQL module tutorial series. In the last video, we've seen how to integrate our select statement into our SQL module for PowerShell. And then I've also shown you guys how to actually invoke that SQL select statement. And then I've also seen that we can actually filter out the actual results uh, with just simple PowerShell code because the object that we return is usable. Uh, so it is a fully functional PowerShell object coming back from the database. So we just have to integrate now the insert, the update, and the select statement. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, these are all really similar. So I'll be covering them all three in this video. Uh, there's some slight differences to each one, but they're very, very slight. Um, so I think that we can just combine these all into one video. I will be spending a lot of time on the insert, which is going to be the one that we're going to be doing first. And then the update and the delete are very, very similar. Uh, so I'll be showing you guys basically by copy pasting our insert statement, how we are going to be able to do the update and delete by using very, very similar code. So without further ado, let's get started here. So we actually have our SQL select, uh, our SQL insert statement that we used to have uh, before. So as we know, we already have the module to do this part and this part. So really the only part that we need to do is going to be this. And actually it is really only going to be these two lines and this one. Uh, this is actually all data that's inside of this command text here which is the insert statement. And that's going to be taken care of by the user that's using the module. Um, so we will we will not be doing, well, we will not be putting this part in. So it's, it's a very, very short uh, function. So let's go ahead and let's create our function in our module here. So we're gonna call it function. We're gonna call it invoke SQL insert. And again, we're just gonna do our open and close curly brackets. Now with every new commandlet, we're going to do the square brackets and put commandlet binding and open and close parentheses. And then we are going to start a param, open and close parentheses as well. And then we are going to put our parameters. So our first parameter, um, as all the other parameters here for our functions, is going to be our connection, uh, which is going to be a mandatory parameter. And then our second parameter, which is also going to be mandatory, very similar to our select statement, uh, our select function, it has a select statement. This one is going to have an insert statement. So once again, it's going to be a string and we're going to do insert statement here. And that should be good for the parameters. So then what we need to do um, as we know, is we need to create that command. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do SQL command equals connection dot create command and then open and close parentheses. And then we are going to do SQL command dot command text equals our insert statement and then we're going to do our sql command dot execute non query oh, so that should be good so now what we're going to want to do uh, like we always do that I actually forgot here is going to wrap this in a try catch statement here just to catch any errors that might happen we can actually throw them back to the user and then we always do the right error uh, dollar sign underscore dot exception dot message all right so what this is going to do this is going to do the insert now I'm going to show you guys just running this code what happens here so let me just save this here let me re-import the module let me make the connection to the database and then let's go ahead and let's do an invoke 
SQL insert connection. Let's pass in our connection. Then our insert statement is going to be insert into log. Actually, let me just copy this here. And then we are just going to do All we are going to do is do a, we're just going to copy this insert statement here. We're just going to slightly modify it. Do test details. We're going to leave it for our computer name and then the script we are going to do. A module test. Let's go ahead and let's execute that here. So as we see, we do get back a one. Um, that's because the command executed successfully. If it would not have ex executed successfully, we would have gotten a zero here. Uh, so that's uh, going to be an issue if we don't um, like it is in a try catch statement, but if for some reason the command actually executes, it just doesn't insert a column for some reason, we get a zero, uh, which is a possibility, we won't get anything back saying that it hasn't worked. So what I like to do in this case, and also I just don't want it to display the one. So what I usually do is I add a result equals SQL command dot execute non query. This will still execute the query of the insert, but also store the result in it um, to the result variable. And then what I usually do is I go like this. I go if result equals one, then we go right output, insert successful and we go else and then instead of doing an error i do a right warning uh, because maybe maybe it's not an actual error maybe you're just making sure that it's in there like technically the command did not fail it just it didn't insert into the database so i do an insert failed and i do that as a right warning so now if we actually go ahead and re-import our module and we reinsert this line here we get an insert successful now what you would be able to do is in theory you could just do write verbose here and write verbose here and then what you would be able to do at that point is when we import our module by default you will not get any output but if the user for some reason wanted to do a dash verbose, we get the insert successful here. Um, and then if it failed, they would get the um, insert failed statement. So by doing it, it right verbose, we really give the option to the user that is using our module to decide whether or not they want to display that out to the console. So that's the way that I really like to do it there. So that's pretty much it for the insert statement. So let's go ahead and let's do the update statement. So we're going to do a function invoke SQL update, then open and close squirrely brackets. And then what I like to do is I like to just copy paste the actual full inside of the function here. And then all I do is I change the insert statement to an update statement and just copy that there. And then what I like to do, because the update statement, the result of it might actually be greater than one. So the update will actually give the number of rows that it successfully updates. So if it only updates one, it'll be one. But if it updates two rows, it'll actually give um, the result of two. 
Now, the way that we can actually check this as well is if we just do a write output of result here, and we just change these words to update, and I'm going to leave it as equals to one, and you will see what I mean by that. All right, so now we're going to do an import module again. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a invoke SQL update our connection. We're just going to pass our connection and we're going to do an update statement. Now, what I'm going to do, just so you guys can actually see what the database looks like right now, I just did the select statement. And right now we can see all of our all of our uh, options here, which we do have quite a bit. Um, so we have our module test, module test here that we've ran a little bit earlier. Um, so that's all good. So now what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to go ahead and change all these module tests to just test computer. So let's do update log set computer name equal to test computer. Oops, test computer where computer name is equal or actually where Actually, we're going to be app name equals module test. All right, and then we are going to actually execute this here. Now, we should actually get, in theory, we should get uh, an update successful, but we're actually going to see an update failed. And we're going to see a right output result, I believe, of four. So there we are. We do get four. Um, and of course, uh, I need to do it for both so you guys can actually see what it says. So we get four and we get update failed. But if we go into our select statement again and we look at the results, we can actually see module test is test computer, module test, test computer, um, module test, test computer, module test, test computer. So it does work. Um, we just do not capture for four. So what I like to do here for the update is change this equal to a greater or equals to one and leaving that as update successful. If it's greater or equals to one, and if it is zero or less, it will be update failed. And then we only have our delete statement left. So all we need to do is invoke uh, function invoke SQL delete and open and close curly brackets. And then we are just going to again copy paste our whole function here. And then we are going to change this update to delete. And then change these words from update to delete. And delete is very much the same thing. The result is going to be greater or equals to one based on the number of lines that it deletes. So this will actually stay the exact same. And we're just going to save this. And then once again, we are going to import our module. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do our invoke SQL delete, pass in our connection. Pass in our, our uh, delete statement, not an update statement. And we're going to do a delete from log where app name equals module test. And we are going to do that verbose so we can see if the delete failed or worked. There we are. We do see the delete is successful. So now if we go back into our results and we look at our results here, we can see that we only have our free 
which is our prod and our test script. All the module tests are completely gone. So that does work properly here. So everything is working. We have our full SQL module here. Uh, so everything is going to work for you guys. So the next video that I'm going to be working on is actually integrating this with a logging module. So we're going to be putting this SQL module into a logging module. We're going to build that logging module specifically for the logging table that we have built. Um, so in that video, I'm going to go a little bit over um, how we created our logging table once again. And then we're going to start from scratch building a module. We are going to import this SQL module and we are going to be building a module just for doing logging. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing that logging module into our scripts to be able to log. And then this way, if we ever change the logging database, all we need to do is actually just change the logging module. And that is it. All of our scripts that integrate to that logging module will get that new module. And then it will just work because we're using very, very basic SQL statements here. Um, so all we need to do is just modify, like I said, that logging module and everything else will work. So that is the great benefit to kind of like isolating these modules out separately um, and then integrating them to our scripts. So be sure to tune in for that. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.